If patients are at high stroke risk, it may be uh, one of the factors that, for which the physician and patient in their collaboration and talking together decide to go for a PCI procedure or even for optimal medical management alone and defer bypass. It's a very important determinant of who goes for bypass surgery. We're now trying to determine what are the factors that determine risk of stroke. Uh, it looks like prior stroke is very important, which makes sense patients with renal dysfunction, and the kinds of procedures that are done, how you're operated on, do they look at the aorta, do they clamp the aorta at an area where there's a lot of atherosclerosis, and is there showering of the, of the uh, cerebral bed with, uh, you know, with a microemboli and clot and, and other, um, other factors. So We're trying to determine what is the link. There are three factors we think that link to stroke after surgery. One is stopping antiplatelet drugs and not resuming them if people were on dual antiplatelet drugs. One of them is atrial fibrillation, right, around the time of the procedure. And the other was how you operate on a patient. Do you surveil the aorta, where you clamp it, and the procedure itself? There are practice variations that we're evaluating because it seems like patients in North America do not have the same excess stroke rate as patients outside of North America. We don't think it's because their surgeons are any less skilled. It may be in how they operate, how long they're on the pump, where they clamp the aorta, and how they surveil the aorta, and, and we're looking into those three factors. So we're doing a large registry now to try to understand this better and then go into an intervention to try to prevent stroke. So you're right, it's a big factor today, hopefully, five years from now, we'll have studies to suggest how we can reduce stroke and bypass. Because if you can do that, bypass is a great procedure, particularly when you have multi-vessel disease. Well, we think there's a, an influence of, of sex. Um, it, it, when we did this analysis, we found that the lower blood pressure was, was greater in males than females. The females were more likely to have out-of-control blood pressure. So there was some differences there, and there may be other comorbidities as a factor. So women, by the time they get to bypass surgery, may have other comorbidities that lead to pe people backing off of, of aggressive blood pressure control. So that's another thing we need to look into. But I think that the message is low blood pressure is associated with poor outcome in many other studies, and we're kind of showing this in this analysis that you might even be more liberal on the blood pressure around the periprocedural period and, be, and still afford yourself the, uh, the advantages of bypass surgery. I think completing the registry, I think the other thing is to evaluate the influence of blood pressure in other databases, because this is a finding that was unexpected, really. Um, we, we had a hypothesis, but I think it, it is a hypothesis generating, and we need to confirm it in other large databases, the STS database in the US, uh, other clinical trials, and see if this uh, signal has emerged. We think it's related to the degree of atherosclerosis. So in patients who have bypass, multi-vessel disease, they have a number of grafts, a number of vein grafts, and they need to keep those vein grafts open. They need perfusion pressure. And so um, we're looking really not at your garden variety, non-diabetic, may have a few grafts in, but we're looking at really aggressive disease here. So I think that's the caution in our trial is that these are high-risk patients. These are people that have, you know, in PCI, we'll have five or six stents. In bypass, we'll have three or four grafts at least. I think for the long term, after that first perioperative period, I think the guidelines are appropriate. I think what this tells us is in that periprocedural period, we may have perioperative guidelines for cardiac surgery that are refined because of this analysis. We're excited about having patients treated optimally for their medical risk factors and we're learning more and more every day about what are the optimal targets for certain populations. It's not one size fits all. I think that's the message.